in your hardships, in your sorrow, in your disappointments. The Lord wants you to have joy in your time of ordinary living. Why? Good morning. It is such a joy to be with you again today. And I want to begin this morning by quoting the part of a benediction that we find in the book of Jude. The book of Jude is just one chapter just before the book of Revelation. It ends with a beautiful benediction in the 24th and 25th verses, but these lovely words in the 25th verse. To the only God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, power and authority, both now and forevermore. Amen. Both now and forevermore. I want you to remember those two words, now and forevermore. We all know what now means. Now is today, the present. But when we think of forevermore, when did forevermore begin? Well, it began at the beginning, didn't it? If it's something that just now happened, it begins today. But when we think of forevermore, we often think of the far distant future. We think of eternity. We think of the time when we'll be in heaven with the Lord. We think of that as forevermore, and that is that includes that as well. But somehow it's easier to think, I, I believe, it's easier to think of the glory of God in forever than it is to think of it in our now. I think that's because it is, it's easier to believe that the future is going to sh unfold the full glory of the Lord, the full majesty, power, and authority of our God. It's easier to imagine it in forever than it is to think of that glory now, in today, this day, with its very ordinary routines, and maybe its hardships, or its difficulties, or sorrows. Do we see God in are now to just have a little more insight into this thought i want us to look at some of the wor words of the apostle peter and you'll find it in the first uh, letter that he wrote this is in the book of first peter we're going to read that in first peter chapter one while you're finding that i want to mention that the audience that peter wrote his letters to were uh, people that were facing great persecution and yet he made this startling uh, statement about them. He said, you greatly rejoice. What did they have to greatly rejoice about? Let's start reading in chapter 1. We're going to start reading at verse 3. It doesn't begin with a mournful note at all. It begins with a burst of praise. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. And then he begins the list of the things that they have to rejoice about. First of all, in his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. That's now. Hallelujah. We have a new birth and that beautiful phrase into a living hope hope. That's a whole nother message, isn't it? Beautiful words. And then he goes on. Secondly, verse four, into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil, or fade. Love that. Kept in heaven for you. Aha! Kept in heaven. That's forever. That's in the future, isn't it? And then look at verse five. Who through faith I'm going to just differentiate here in the King James. I love both these expressions. In the King James, it says, you are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation. Love that, kept by the power of God. NIV says it, through faith, you're shielded by God's power. Both of them are beautiful pictures, but they go on to say that is ready to be revealed in the last time. Ah, 
Now we're talking about forever again in the future. It's going to be revealed in the future. And then he goes on in verse six and he says, in this or in these things, you greatly rejoice. Now comes the twist, the latter part of verse six. Though now, underline that, though now for a little while, you may have had to suffer grief in all kinds of trials. Uh, wait a minute, Peter. What happened to all those beautiful promises, all those things to greatly rejoice about? Tell me, how can I rejoice now in my time of trial, in my time of hardship? Can I rejoice when I'm facing a time of trial or a time of hardship? And I just, I just want you to, to really, to, to know, because if you, we can't take time to study the whole letter that he wrote. But Peter, in writing to those tempted and suffering and persecuted believers, noted that they could rejoice because they counted God's promises and provisions greater than their own trials. Think back. What did they rejoice in? Their salvation, their inheritance, their uh, protection being kept by the power of God. Those great things that they had to rejoice in, those were the promises and the provisions. He's, he's, he's really saying, beloved, those are greater than your trials. Though now, for a little while, he says, <laughs> for a little while, I'm sure some of those people, their little while lasted till forever because they probably died in those days of persecution. Many Christians did. But I think the bonus comes in verse 7. I just want to close with verse 7. These have come so that your faith, which is of greater worth than gold, which perishes, even though refined by fire, may be proved genuine and may result in the praise, glory, may result in praise, glory, and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Beloved, uh, God does not want us to postpone uh, our joy for the future. I, I know some believers that do that. They're looking forward to heaven, but there never seems to be any joy in now, in their life here on this earth. I, I want to say to you uh, that the Lord wants you to have joy now, in your time of ordinary living, in your hardships, in your sorrow, in your disappointments. Why? I'm just going to read that phrase again. Because God's promises and provisions are greater than your trials. The things that he has given cannot be taken away. They're kept. They are kept. And I just, you know, if, if you uh, remain faithful to Christ in the midst of your trials, in the midst of your persecutions, then it's going to purify your faith. It will be to the glory. We read it there, the praise and the glory of the honor and honor both to you and to our Lord Jesus Christ. I just want to close again with those beautiful words in Jude 25. To him be glory both now and forevermore. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we do praise you. You are the God of yesterday and today and forever. And I just believe that you would quicken us in, in our spirits, Lord, that we would rejoice in you today. Rejoice in you for your promises. Rejoice in you for the provisions, you, what you've given and the things that are waiting for us in forever. Lord, you are good to your children. And Lord, in 
our times of difficulty, in our times of ordinary living, I just pray that we will rejoice, that we will find you now, that we will see your glory now, that we will spread the good news now. To the honor and the praise of your name we ask this. Amen. God bless you today.